The T-Mobile Sprint merger saga continues with the development of DISH and their nationwide 5G network that doesn't totally exist yet, but will soon ish. Here's a quick overview. T-Mobile acquired Sprint and they merged, but before the FCC would approve the merger, Sprint had to divulge some of their assets, including Boost Mobile, and guess who got Boost? Dish. For the merger to be approved, T-Mobile also had to let Dish use their network until they get a network of their own up and running. Now, there are still only three major carriers, but the hope is that there will be four by the end of the decade. And that is what I'm here to discuss today. If you haven't yet, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and of course, turn on those notifications. I come out with new videos every Wednesday and Friday, and I'm now going live every Monday around 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time if you wanna join in and watch those. So did you miss that intro? That's okay, I'm breaking it down even further into a few sections that you can look down below at the chapter selection. So first, what are the important details of the T-Mobile Sprint merger, and why is Dish of all people involved? Second, what does Dish's network look like right now? Third, what is Dish's plan to expand their network? And lastly, and fourth, what is the likelihood that, that Dish will actually become a fourth major cell phone carrier in the United States? Keep watching, I'll have these answers. So before we jump in, who is Dish? Dish started as a satellite TV company launching its first satellite in 1995, and then that was a huge deal, a really big accomplishment. But now that we have SpaceX though, a satellite launch almost seems blasé. Anyhow, Dish continues to improve their offerings from satellite TV to creating Sling TV, one of the first ever cord cutting services. And now they are jumping into cellular networks, all while still offering their original products. So how did they get roped into the Sprint and T-Mobile merger? Well, states across the country were worried that a merger between Sprint and T-Mobile would violate antitrust laws which keep competition alive in the United States. And the only way a judge would allow the merger to continue was if Sprint sold off some of its prepaid businesses, aka Boost Mobile, to a third-party company. Then that third-party company would work to create a brand new cellular network, which in turn would turn into the fourth major cell phone carrier in America. Now that third party ended up being Dish. Initially, it might seem odd to have a satellite TV company help in the acquisition of a cell phone company, but apparently, as reported by multiple outlets, Dish has been buying up 5G Spectrum for a while now, waiting for their moment to ask, can you hear me now? So what does Dish's network look like right now? Dish is pretty well set up to be the fourth major carrier in the United States. Right now they have acquired two MVNOs, also known as mobile virtual network operators, who are smaller carriers that rent space on the major carrier networks. The two carriers are Boost Mobile and Ting Mobile. Now, right now, Dish does not have standalone plans of their own yet, but should by 2023, let me explain. In the antitrust lawsuits, Dish promised they would have a full-fledged network by 2023. Not only would it cover 70% of the United States, it would be strictly 5G, setting themselves up to be the first standalone 5G-only network in the United States. So how will Dish expand beyond MVNOs? Right now, Dish isn't a major player because they don't have their own network up and running and they are renting space on T-Mobile's network. Through 2023, they plan on spending upwards of $10 billion to build their 5G network. Now, they haven't released specific details on how that's going to happen or how they will necessarily accomplish that goal, but it will include building a new network from scratch with old and new technologies. Well, I know that's a non-answer, sorry, but that's all we have right now. So what's the likelihood of this happening in a timely manner? Well, Dish didn't give itself much leeway in terms of getting their service up and running. Three years is a short amount of time to build an entire nationwide network from scratch, so it makes sense that there are some Dish critics who think they won't have 70% coverage by that deadline in 2023. On top of that, this three-year deadline is already an extension of an original agreement they had to get their service up and running. Like I mentioned earlier, Dish has been 
been buying up 5G spectrum, getting ready for their cellular debut, but they haven't ever used it. And because of that, they've been called out by many industry experts and leaders, and the FCC even gave them an original timeline of March 2020 to use or lose their spectrum. So two things will happen in 2023. Dish will have a network up and running or they'll be given another extension. Honestly, it wouldn't really surprise me if Dish got another extension. And if I was a betting woman, I'd wager that they won't be ready to offer 5G service by 2023, at least to 70% of America. And if somehow they do offer service, I highly doubt their coverage will be what they want it to be. Although I'd love to be proved wrong. What do you think of Dish in three years, what do you think the coverage will look like? Let me know in the comments below. I'm Sherry Riggs. Thanks for watching. What's Loud TV?